This is a quick tutorial on creating a chain ring for a bicycle. I'm going to start by bringing in reference. I'll go into my front view spacebar for hotbox. Click in the center, front view, view, image plane, import image. Uh, once you have the image plane in, you can move it and scale it. Uh, you know, as you need to. I don't have the rest of the bicycle in here, so I'll just leave it there. But what I do like to do is push it back just a little bit. And what that does is I can see my grid now in front of the chain ring. I'm going to start with a polygon primitive called a pipe. Create polygon primitive pipe. And if you want to go into the options, it's not a bad idea to have the axis. See the Z is pointed out at me, so if I Create it on the z-axis. Uh, it'll be oriented correctly to begin with. Otherwise, you can just create it and rotate it around, which is no problem. So let's start by getting this centered. I'll just use this uh, circle right here in the image to help me do that. And that looks about right. Um, I'll click on the inputs here and adjust the radius. Uh, one very um, the way I'm doing that is clicking on the word radius and then middle mouse dragging with. Um, using the middle mouse button. A good note is if you hold down the control key while your middle mouse dragging, it gives you finer control. And wireframe four to see what uh, I'm doing here. And then uh, I'm gonna adjust the thickness. So actually I should get the radius so the outside ring matches and then adjust the thickness to get the inside. So we've got the um, correct thickness there. And for this, um, to take a look here, I might actually move the image plane further back. Um, you know, unless I have more reference images, this is just going to be an educated guess as to how thick it is. So let's go pretty thin with this, but uh, let's call that good. So now I'm going to add some detail to this again using the input. Before I start modeling, it's you shouldn't usually. If you change these things after you start adjusting the model, you'll get weird results. So typically you want to set it up before. I counted, I think there's about uh, 36 of these um, gear teeth and, but I want to have a space in between each. So I'm going to double that and make it 72. So you can see all that detail. And then you'll also notice how there's this kind of, uh, it, it extends out here, this, kind of lighter portion that face there. So I'm going to add some detail for that too, and that's going to be the caps. And uh, we'll adjust the position of that in a bit. So now I'm going to have to select every other face around the top of this, which will take a couple minutes. Um, so just right mouse, right mouse click face and select every other going around. There's probably some script out there or something that'll speed this up, but uh, it doesn't take too long. Just holding down shift and clicking every other one. Okay. So I have every other face selected. Um, now I'm going to introduce a nice trick to you. If, if I wanted to like make these smaller or bigger and I use the scale tool, uh, that's definitely not going to work. It's going to get these crazy results. But there's under Edit Mesh, there's this nice thing called Transform Components that allows me to uh, adjust all of these equally. And what I see is that you know the part of this that I'm going to extrude out is much wider actually than the space in between the teeth. So I'm going to make all these individually wider using this nice tool. So see how the space in between is getting smaller and then each of those faces is getting wider now. Uh, and again, that was that in mesh, transform components. And it gives you this multiple manipulator tool. So now that I've done that, I'm going to do extrude face. And as always, use your reference. So I think I'll start by just going about halfway out the width, uh, the distance of the teeth, and adjust that. You know, have it start to get a little 
narrower in that direction and also um, narrower in this direction, a little thinner. And then I'm going to extrude face again just to give us a little more detailed control. And just that. And again, use your reference to, you know, adjust the thickness here. Now I can see I probably didn't go far enough on my last one. So for that, I'm going to go back to that extrude face in the inputs here. And I think that's going to be this uh, local translate Z. So I'm going to hold down control and middle mouse drag. Oh, no, nope, that's the wrong one. Let's try local scale Y. No, nope. and local scale X. Okay, better. So see how I'm adjusting that now to match the shape after the fact? And it looks like actually the top may be a little too thin there, so uh, I can go back to this one and what do we say, local scale X? Get that a little wider again. So those teeth, you know, look about the same to me. Uh, maybe maybe a bit longer. We're not perfectly lined up here, you can see. So it makes it a little tricky, but let's go, obviously you know how to adjust it, but let's call that good enough. And take a look in the 3D view. Looking all right. I think those are going to be actually a little thinner seeing it from this angle. So we were in here, local scale Y. Yeah, there we go. See, that's getting thinner now. Okay. Now, um, I want to adjust uh, the position of this to get that kind of ridge going there. So uh, a quick way to select the whole ring is to sh select one face and then shift double click the one next to it and they'll select the whole loop. And you can see it's a little tricky for me to do this side, but I can see them over here. Again, holding down shift because I already have this one selected, so I want to keep that selection and then double click there and I get that loop. Back to my front view, wireframe. Um, now I can just use the regular scale and I'll use this one to kind of move that out to match that. And that worked pretty well, just like that. And then uh, if I scale it out uh, this direction, you can see it moves it out and I'm getting that kind of ridge there. Uh, maybe I want to go thinner in these. Maybe this inner one can be thinner. And um, you'll notice that this looks a little soft here. I'm just going to undo. Oh, that's fine. I need to select these again. And if I want to get that edge to look hard, I can just go to um, normals and harden edge. And so then I can see that um, those lines there. So that's a quick start to getting the chain ring. Um, there's obviously more to do. I think, you know, you'd want to do this other piece separately, but uh, this will give you a good start.